Hi, I'm Isabella Mitchell. I've always been proud of my career in marketing. At 32, I worked my way up to become an executive at one of Chicago's top firms, earning $95K a year. Life was good, and I thought it got even better when I met James Henderson at a real estate conference. You're the most driven woman I've ever met, he'd say, flashing that million-dollar smile that made me forget all my doubts. We married after a year of dating. That's when I met his five sisters, all divorced with kids. At first, they lived scattered across the city, each dealing with their own drama. My ex is such a deadbeat, Emma would complain during family dinners, her two kids running wild around my newly decorated living room. At least yours pays child support, Lisa would chime in, bouncing her toddler on her knee. You're so lucky to have such a successful career, Isabella, they'd say, but their eyes told a different story. My best friend Kate noticed things before I did. Over lunch at her law firm one day, she pointed out the red flags. Why does James need access to your personal savings account? You already have a joint account. I defended him, of course. He's just helping me manage our finances better. But things started changing subtly. First, it was small comments from James. Babe, you really need to be home earlier. Emma needed help with her kids' homework today. Then it became more frequent. You're family now, Isabella. Family takes care of family. The girls really need support right now. One evening while sorting through bills, I noticed some unusual charges. Honey, what's this $500 transfer to Lisa's account? She needed help with rent this month. We can't let her and the kid end up on the street, right? I remember staring at our bank statement, my stomach turning. That's the third time this month we've helped one of your sisters. Are you saying my family isn't worth helping? You make good money, Isabella. We should share our blessings. That night, as I lay in bed checking my phone, a text from Kate popped up. You okay? You seemed off at lunch today. I typed back, just tired. Work's been crazy. But it wasn't work that was crazy. It was everything else. The constant calls from his sisters, the unexpected visits, the growing financial demands. Each day I felt more like a bank and less like a sister-in-law. I didn't know it then, but this was just the beginning. James's charming facade was starting to crack, revealing something much darker beneath. But I was still trying to be the perfect wife the perfect sister-in-law, while holding on to my career with both hands. If only I knew what was coming next. Things took a dark turn when James announced his brilliant idea over dinner one night. I found perfect houses for all the girls within two blocks of us. Isn't that great? I nearly choked on my wine. All of them? How can they afford that? Don't worry about it. I worked out a special deal through my real estate connections. Within a month, they all moved in. That's when my nightmare really began. Isabella, can you watch the kids? I have a job interview, Emma would text at 7 a.m. Emergency, need you to pick up the kids from school, Rachel would call during my important meetings. One morning, I walked into my kitchen to find Lisa making breakfast for her kid. James gave me a key for emergencies, she smiled, like it was the most normal thing. I confronted James that evening. This is getting out of hand. I can't focus on my work. Maybe that's for the best. The kids need a proper aunt figure. You make enough money for all of us anyway. I froze. What do you mean, all of us? That's when I discovered the truth. Checking my banking app during lunch, my heart stopped. My savings had been drained through multiple transfers. Just helping family get settled, James shrugged when I confronted him. You're being selfish. My credit card statements revealed thousands spent at furniture stores. James had been furnishing his sister's houses with my money. Listen here, he growled when I demanded explanations. You're part of this family now. Stop acting like some stuck-up princess. The final straw came during a big marketing presentation. My phone wouldn't stop buzzing. Emergency, Maria's kids are sick. You need to come home now. I left mid-presentation. Rushed home to find the kids. Oh, they're feeling better now, Maria smirked. That night, James dropped the bomb. You need to quit your job. The girls need help with the kids. Absolutely not, his face changed. 
You ungrateful witch. After everything I've done for you, done for me. You've stolen my savings. It's called sharing, Isabella. But you wouldn't know about that, would you? Always putting your career first. What kind of woman are you? I called Kate crying that night. Something's not right, she said. The way he's isolating you, controlling your money. I'm taking notes of everything. Keep any evidence you can find. My once pristine home became a chaotic daycare. My career was hanging by a thread. I started having anxiety attacks in bathroom stalls at work. You look terrible, my boss noticed. Everything okay at home? I forced a smile. Just family stuff. But it wasn't just family stuff. It was systematic destruction of everything I'd worked for. My independence, my career, my sanity, all being sacrificed on the altar of James's family first manipulation. I didn't know it then, but James was playing a much bigger game. The houses, the money, the constant chaos, it was all part of a bigger scheme. One that would soon blow up in all our faces. Everything unraveled one sleepless night when I decided to thoroughly check our financial records. What I found made my blood run cold. Hey, what's this document with my signature? I never signed for a $50,000 loan. I dug deeper into James's office while he was out showing houses. Bank statements, loan documents, client contracts, all revealing an elaborate real estate scam. My phone buzzed. A message from Diana sent to me by mistake. Isabella's is such a fool. Can't believe she hasn't figured out what we're doing with the house deposits yet. Another text from Rachel. James says once everything falls apart, she'll take the blame since her name's on the documents I felt sick. Hands shaking, I called Kate. Don't react. Meet me at the coffee shop across from my office. Now. At the cafe, I showed her everything. Look at these loan documents. That's not my signature. And these client deposits, they're being funneled directly into personal accounts. Kate's face grew serious. This is major fraud, Isabella, and they're setting you up to take the fall. That evening, I overheard the sisters in my kitchen. Poor career-obsessed Isabella, so busy at work she doesn't notice what's happening in her own house. Remember when she actually believed we needed childcare? As if we couldn't afford nannies with all this cash flowing in. I stepped into view. Their fake smiles made me nauseous. Oh, Isabella, we were just... Save it. Later that night, I confronted James with the evidence. You forged my signature. You're stealing client deposits. Listen carefully. One word about this to anyone, and you'll regret it. Besides, whose name is all over those documents? Not mine. You ungrateful bitch. Everything I did was for family. You're just collateral damage. I played it cool, acted scared, submitted. But inside I was done. The next day at a family gathering, I overheard Maria on the phone. Yeah, the perfect setup. James made sure Isabella's name is on everything. When it all crashes, she'll take the fall. Poor workaholic wife, secretly stealing from clients to support her husband's struggling sisters. Emma chimed in. The best part? She actually thinks she's helping family. Wait till she finds out we've been living off client deposits this whole time. I slipped away to call Kate. It's worse than we thought. They're running a full-scale fraud operation. And I'm their scapegoat. I've been documenting everything, Kate replied. But we need to move fast. They're getting sloppy, which means they're close to their endgame. That night, I lay in bed next to James, my heart racing. The man I married was a stranger. His sisters weren't victims of failed marriages. They were willing participants in a massive fraud scheme. And I? I was their perfect patsy, the successful career woman who'd take the fall when it all came crashing down. But they didn't know one thing. I had a plan of my own, and karma was about to hit them all like a freight train. The morning I executed my escape plan started like any other. Don't forget Emma's kids need picking up at three, he reminded me. Of course, honey. Little did he know I'd never be doing their school runs again. I had spent weeks secretly copying every document, recording conversations on my phone. The previous day, I'd accepted a VP position at a marketing firm in Boston, a significant upgrade from my current role. 
Meeting Kate at her law firm, we set everything in motion. The fraud investigators have everything they need, she confirmed. They'll move once you're safely away. You sure the restraining order will go through? With the evidence of his threats? Absolutely. i just finished clearing out my office when my phone exploded with notifications. You backstabbing witch, James's text read. The real estate board just showed up. Then from Emma, how dare you, they're investigating our benefits. I blocked them all and boarded my flight to Boston. Within weeks, everything imploded. Kate kept me updated. James's biggest clients are suing for millions. The sister's welfare fraud got exposed during the investigation. They're all getting evicted. My new apartment overlooked the Boston Harbor. My new job valued my expertise. I was finally free. Then the desperate calls started. Baby, please, I can explain everything. I'll change. Isabella, we're family. We made mistakes, but we need you. I sent all calls to voicemail. Months later, I read about James losing his real estate license. His sisters, no longer able to coast on fraud and welfare, had to find actual jobs. James faced tax evasion charges that would keep him occupied for years. Your divorce is final, Kate announced over the phone. And guess what? James just got served with federal tax evasion charges. How are the sisters handling their evictions? Working minimum wage jobs. Turns out fraud doesn't look good on a resume. I used part of my new salary to start a foundation, helping women recognize and escape financial abuse. During our first meeting, I shared my story. I thought I was alone, one woman said. Thank you for showing us there's a way out. Last week, I received a letter from Maria. We're truly sorry. We were horrible people. Please forgive us. I dropped it in the shredder without responding. My phone buzzed. A message from Kate. Just drove past your old house. For sale by bank sign up. Karma's really doing her thing. Standing at my window, watching the sunset over Boston Harbor, I smiled. My new life was everything I'd worked for, but better. No toxic family, no manipulation, no drama. Just me, my career, my freedom, and the satisfaction of knowing that justice doesn't always need revenge. Sometimes it just needs time and truth. And to all the other women out there trapped in toxic families and relationships, there's always a way out. You just have to be smart, be brave, and most importantly, be ready to choose yourself. What would you have done if you discovered your spouse had been secretly building an elaborate scheme to frame you for their crimes while pretending to help their struggling family? Would you have exposed them immediately? Or played along while gathering evidence like I did? <laughs>